Guys, in question or reaction 8, I need you guys to pay careful attention. Something quite interesting is happening here. This is actually the second time that I'm now recording this video. Um, I recorded this video in 2019 and it's now 2021. And the reason that I'm re-recording this is that I used to get comments from students saying, Kevin, um, what about the water? Where's the water or where's this? And I would always tell them, no guys, there's no water. Well, it just so turns out after me doing a full day's worth of researching and investigating, looking at all the different textbooks in South Africa, is that teachers are showing two different ways. Now, technically, both methods are correct, but as a student, it might come across as very confusing. And so what I'm going to do for you guys in this lesson is I'm going to show you the two different methods and I would like you to stick to the method that your teacher uses in class. Now it's super weird because even in the official CAPS documents they use the one method and then if I look at some of the exams they use the other method. So you sort of have to know about both methods I would guess so that in the exam when they ask it in a specific way you'll know what to do. Now the two methods are very very similar, it's not a big difference, um, it's just the way that we write it out. So let me show you, I'm going to start with the first method and I'll call this method one. Okay, so with method one we are going to go from a halo alkane to an alkene and Remember when I showed you guys reaction two, we sometimes used, um, we could use something like H2O, NaOH, or KOH. And then I told you that the NaOH and the KOH must be very dilute, okay? So now, the reason I need to mention that is that in this reaction, we're gonna use KOH or NaOH, but now you need to make sure that these are concentrated. Okay, now we're not going to use both of them. We're just going to use one of them. So I'm going to choose NaOH. Okay, so I'm going to choose NaOH and I'm going to write out the products. Okay, so what happens is that we're trying to develop an alkene and so we're going to have to get rid of the Cl and then we'll get rid of an H on the carbon that is next to that. Uh, so it's this carbon that's losing the Cl, and then the carbon next to it would lose an H. And so the product would be C, H, H, C, H, C, H, H, and H. And so what we should identify is that we've lost something over here, and we've lost something over here. So what that now means is that these two carbons over here have only have three bonds. And so to fix that, we put a double bond. All right, now we need to give out the other products. And so what we must identify is that, or, or a common mistake, and that's this is where the whole issue comes in, and I'll show you in method number two that I'll do down here, and I'll try to help you to understand. But when you write this out, and you actually show this as a reactant, then this CO, is going to bond with that Na and this H that we knocked off is going to bond with that and so we're going to end up with NaCl as another product and then H2O as the third product. Okay, so that's method one. That's the method that I did not used to use but then students used to tell me but Kevin where's the water and I was always like guys there is no water in this reaction but then I, as I said I did lots of research because it was becoming a re really frustrating for me because these students really felt like there was a water and I was like no there's not and then after doing lots of research I looked at all the textbooks in South Africa and half of them literally half of them do the one way and half of them do the other and as I said both methods are actually correct, uh, but as a student, you might not see that and it might be very frustrating. So now I'm going to show you the second way. So the second way is where we obviously start off with the same thing, but then when we, we don't say plus NaOH, we rather put it at the top here. So we show that it's not reacting with the molecule, it's almost acting like a catalyst in a way. And so we're still going to end up with the same product. See, so there's not much of a difference. 
But now here's where the difference comes in. Because this is not a reactant, we can't include it as part of the products. So the only products that we are going to be able to show is we're going to say plus. And then what happens is that this Cl was eliminated and this H was eliminated. And so we are going to pretend that those two have joined together to become that. And so that is the only product. Okay, and so these are the two different ways that you might see. Um, either your teacher shows you this method or your teacher shows you this method. Both of them are technically correct. And so maybe what would be really cool is you guys could leave a little comment under this video and let me know which method does your teacher use. I'm very curious just to see. Now, I also want to talk about uh, the overall name. So this in both scenarios, one or two, Notice that we eliminated the H and the CL. So these are both going to be called elimination reactions. And specifically, we're going to call it dehydrohalogenation. And in both of them, you must know that we're going to use a concentrated base. Now, I used NaOH, but you could have used NaOH or KOH. And what's very important is that you made it concentrated. Remember guys, what I'm showing you now is for both of these methods, for number one and number two. Okay, so we're going to do it for both methods. You're going to use NaOH or KOH and it must be concentrated. Alright, so reaction nine might look very similar to reaction eight. It says haloalkane going to alkene and that's exactly what we've already looked at. But the only difference is, is that now we have two chlorine molecules. Now, since doing my research on reaction eight and trying to fix all of those issues that uh, students were experiencing, I've realized that this reaction is no longer going to be um, examined. And so we, good news, we actually don't need to know this one. And so where I originally said that there are only 13 reactions, there are gonna be 12 that we are gonna be focusing on.